I opened up my Kindle uh, version of the textbook and kind of looked to see what they were calling this uh, widget. So uh, there wasn't really a name for the assembly, so we're going to go with Project uh, 516. All right, so one of the, the problems that we're going to encounter is that this part is currently open, or this assembly is current open, so I need to close it. And we're going to see if it's going to let me um, do the rename. And so prior to 2019 and going into 2020, we used to have a program called SolidWorks Explorer. They've since built this into the Windows right menu, uh, right button context menu. And so if we come over to SolidWorks, then we can rename as opposed to just single clicking and single clicking again to rename or using the Windows right click and rename. This is going to look and see if this document is used in other locations. If there's any other uh, assemblies or drawings, or in this case, um, we're not checking the virtual components, but it's uh, anywhere that it would create a conflict that we have the chance uh, for it to update where it's used. So if I call this project 5-16 and then hit OK, and it went ahead and renamed. So when I come back to SolidWorks and go to my Recents, all right, and I go to click on the follower, and eh, not going to find it. All right, but that's OK. We can click on the Open. Should take me to the last saved uh, location that I saved or uh, did anything. And when I tell it to open the assembly, that's going to bring it up and make it active. All right. So be careful with the, uh, the renaming. Try to um, develop a strategy and stay with it. And then we're going to bring in one of the um, one of the pins. So strategy is going to be bring in one part at a time. If you bring in everything, then you're going to end up kind of chasing geometry, and there's going to be a lot of chaos and confusion going on the screen. Uh, one one item is more than enough to um, to work with. So if I go to Insert Components, and there's multiple ways to do this. Again, we'll kind of hit all of them eventually, but for now, since this I believe was 10 millimeters, we're going to use the large pen, and I'm going to hit OK and open it. And then same thing. If I want to kind of preposition it, I don't necessarily have to. The mates should take care of it. But if I rotate the component about X, well, that didn't quite uh, want the long side to go the other way. So we hit X one more time, and that puts it in position. All right, so once I've made that initial uh, kind of figure out what I'm doing here, then I will um, go ahead and turn the origins off because little blue dots, kind of like the relations, are eventually going to uh, to take over and be a little bit annoying. So next to the view, the little pull-down arrow, we will come down to the view origins, click it, and that just cleans up my work area. All right, so as I'm rotating the view again, I can put this in a better position. I may basically want to make sure that I can select the cylinders or select the faces that I need. All right, so we did planar faces. So I'm going to grab the inside edge, inside um, face, and then we can rotate around and control select the other face and go to coincident. That performs the same function as jumping into the mate, except it doesn't take me into the um, uh, into that mate um, list, so into the feature manager. All right, so we go back over to the mate and watch what happens when we grab two cylinders. Then it goes to concentric, so they're sharing the same center, and we have the ability to lock the rotation. All right, so if I don't lock the rotation, I'm going to go ahead and accept. And you can't really tell anything's going on other than it kind of looks like it's rotating and we have a minus sign in front of the um, in front of the part. Oh, that was what I was looking for with the mates. All right, so if I go back into that mate and um, expand out the uh, the current list of mates in this uh, in this session, 
with the um, the mate uh, feature menu. When I click on it, it takes me back into the two faces, and I can go to lock rotation, hit OK, and now the pin doesn't have the minus sign in, in it anymore. Uh, when I highlight its envelope, its little box there is kind of at a weird angle, but for the most part, I don't care. We uh, we would need to decide what's going to be the uh, the rotation, what's going to be load bearing on the engineering side, but for now. This gets us into that um, uh, the next location. All right, so if I expand this out, I'm going to close up the uh, the base. All right, so now that we have two parts, we're looking at the interaction between those parts. I'm going to expand out the mates, and notice we have coincident and concentric. The solid blue center tells me that that lock rotation has been applied. And if I right click, and since it's locked, we're going to get an unlock rotation. And then if I need to flip the mate alignment, then I can click on the flip the mate alignment without going back in. And it's a little quicker to make adjustments to your assembly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and accept. And we could go to insert component and bring in another pin. But if I hold down the control button and select from the feature manager, or hold down the control button and select a part, I'm going to be able to left click and drag that part into the assembly. And I let go of the mouse button first and the control button second, and that gives me a second instance. So pin instance one and pin instance two. And we're just gonna see what the difference is between the, uh, the faces versus the edges. All right, so I can pick an edge, and for the cylindrical parts, it's um, it's probably going to be okay in most instances. If something weird happens, it's probably because it was an edge. To me, the faces are more stable, but you're going to have to experiment and decide which of those is going to give you the best results. So if I make uh, those coincident or concentric, well, I kind of did the uh, the same thing and it's able to move in and out. Notice that the two objects can occupy the same space. So we want to make this as realistic as possible by adding mates that show this in the best uh, kind of virtual condition for uh, coming up with a, um, a physical condition. All right, so I'm, I already did concentric. I need to make those coincident. Well, it's still two mates, and picking the edge was maybe a little more difficult. So, I, I don't know. The, the faces probably uh, are easier uh, targets to, um, to select for. All right, so the concentric is not filled in solid. I want to lock the rotation. That makes the minus sign go away. And now I have my assembly with the base part and two pens.